So, uh, and then the uh, starting from the point where the open flow switch asks for the decision and the time when the decision has been made and the entries have been installed in the uh, switches is actually the flow setup latency. So before that, no communication can occur. So this is actually the delay faced by the uh, initial delay faced by each flow in the STN uh, architecture. So this is called the flow setup latency. So this uh, to minimize this latency is actually another point of uh, uh, interest and an area of research in the STN domain. And it is very much related to the performance because when we have a, a large number of uh, nodes and a huge traffic, this uh, flow setup latency will become a serious challenge for the STN controller to deal with the large number of uh, uh, flows uh, for the flow setup latency. Similarly, rule consistency is also an issue because if a rule get uh, uh, times out or or rule or ruled out by the switch because of some parameters, so to 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 keep the current view or to the to keep the state of the whole network current is a serious challenge to the SN controller. And for this purpose, there is a continuous communication going on between the network elements, the, like the switches and the nodes and the SN controller to have an updated view of the topology. Uh, so this is actually a challenge that how much uh, time uh, for the periodic, uh, uh, periodic uh, uh, time for gathering the stats from the uh, network is actually a challenge for this team. So what is the optimal or the what would be the uh, minimal or the optimal time or the periodic or the uh, the, uh, the values of uh, parameters that can be set so that the performance or the uh, rule consistency can be made optimally. So security is another issue. Um, uh, and for this purpose, the firewall application, the firewall is a main uh, part in that. Interoperability is also a challenge for the SDN controller because we have I4 and IPv6 going on in the internet at TCP. So in the integration of SDN controller or, or the SDN architecture with the legacy network is a serious challenge, is, is a real challenge for the SDN to cope with the uh, uh, with the legacy network or to uh, uh, to to interoperate with the legacy network is also a challenge for the SDN. Switch design is also a challenge for the SDN uh, architecture because uh, we cannot have an intelligent uh, switch in uh, by by design in the SDN uh, architecture, but we have a fast processing a hardware based switches where. We can have it like the D packet inspection in the, not in the controller because controller is like more of the software part. So we can have hardware based switches high, like the GPU based, like the ASIC based specialized switches that can handle traffic more efficiently and more fast. But all these is uh, managed by the SN controller uh, as far as the software part is concerned. So uh, the switch design is also a challenge and people are working on uh, designing and building uh, different switches to provide as many features uh, as can be to the uh, SDN controller that can be managed by the controller. So, in fact, uh, an optical switch can provide the optical parameter, the list of optical parameter to the parameters are available and the controller, in fact, will use those parameters to configure and to manage these optical switches. Similarly, if we have the deep packet uh, uh, DPI based ASICs available in the uh, switch, so those uh, APIs or those, those parameters can be exposed to the controller and the controller can use those parameters to instruct a, con uh, a switch uh, for particular set of flows uh, for the DPI. And that these uh, flows are uh, matched, if, if these flows are matched, they should be uh, a candidate for the uh, deep packet inspection. So this is uh, one good uh, area of research that we must have a specialized and very uh, efficient hardware-based switches uh, for, uh, for supporting the SDN uh, controller. So let's have an uh, example of the demonstration. This, this was all the theoretical discussion that we 
have today. So now uh, let's uh, have some uh, hands-on and practical as well. So let's have a simple scenario. Here we have a switch and a controller and four hosts attached to them. And uh, the controller is, and it will act as a NAT box and will through the traffic of each host to the internet that we will uh, demonstrate right now. So let me just access the server. <clears throat> Let me just restart the VM so that I think it's taking more uh, <clears throat> a lot of resources. In the meanwhile, it, it is restarting. Any question for, from the discussion that we have? so far. <clears throat> Sorry for the inconvenience. I, I don't know what is the reason. It is not allowing it to restart. <clears throat> Let me restart the whole system. There is some issue with the server. Yes. Uh, some issue with the remote desktop. Correct. Yes. But the server in our lab is up. We have checked in the morning, right? Yes. It was working in the morning. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 
and you can see the chat message that someone has given and he pointed to. Uh, okay, so uh, in the meanwhile, you can uh, take these two questions. Okay, so from Lawrence, is what are the vulnerabilities of open flow? For example, no authentication. If you want to. Okay, so uh, this well, open open flow is uh, TCP based, so. Uh, I mean, it, it uses TCP, right, as a transport loop. In, actually, they use the SSL they, for the use. Yes, OpenFlow yeah. uses SSL for the communication yeah. between controller and the uh, sorry, and yeah. controller and the switches. So, so uh, uh, the authentication part is being uh, uh, done by the TCP itself when when the TCP three-way handshake takes place, and uh, the uh, and the encryption or you know the security part is being handled by the SSL certificate, right? So, Lawrence, I hope that uh, that answers your question. You can, uh, in the meanwhile, take the. You're welcome. Uh, the second question, uh, yeah, from Rinchen, Bhutan. Different types of version of user. Should I call uh, IT support guy? No, let me check. Okay. I think it will work fine now. No way. Can you check now? Up to accessible. Okay. Yes, the VM is accessible now. Okay. So I will, uh, I will answer the question uh, after the demonstration. Okay, so yeah. let's continue uh, with the uh, demonstration part. So, So uh, here is uh, uh, the code. So in uh, uh, yesterday we, we saw the Mininet uh, uh, using the Python script for building topologies, mm -hmm. and uh, here we will see that how the Python script can use the uh, Mininet installed on the system, and will build the topology only by a single script. So this script will build the topology, connect the controller, and will do all the things. As we have, so there is no need for using the command like sudo mn that we have been doing, doing yesterday. So this is another way of uh, using uh, Mirinet, using by the Python script because it is compatible with the Python. So I have what I have done is I have actually disabled or uh, here uh, disabled the NAT NAT feature that is available to this topology. And now I will go to uh, this. This is a script that I will run and it will construct the topology that we just saw in the slides. And uh, the Mininet console will be available to us for testing different commands. So as you can see, it has created the topology, host one uh, switch, and now the, as, uh, the Mininet console is available for testing properly. So if I, do this thing all it will show that any uh, sorry all of them are connected to each other and pinging each other working very fine the link is established between all of the uh, host switch and the controller so uh, internal part is ready so i will now ping h from h1 to the global uh, uh, dns ip address 
and it will say the network is unreachable because there is no NAT feature installed on the controller. And I will now exit from here and then we'll enable the NAT feature that is made available to the controller only by a single command and rerun this uh, the same uh, topology again. So let's bring all to test. Yes, everything is fine. So we have another, as you can see here, we have another, uh, you know, interface NAT0 uh, available. And through this interface, a uh, controller will uh, uh, interact with the internet and internet will be accessible to all of these hosts. From H1, You can see it is pinging now. It means the NAT feature is available and the SN controller is actually working as the NAT box. So to make further uh, clarity on this, let's uh, use the command of uh, H1 IP route, uh, sorry, trace route. So as you can see, the traffic is going uh, from this client. Let, let's first check what is the IP address of this uh, client. So H1 IP config. Sorry. Config. So the IP address of this client is 10.0.0.1. So let's check the IP address of the controller. So see, so actually this, uh, the same command will run for the controller as well. So the nomenclature of this command is actually the, the first part will tell the host where you want to run the command and the next would be the command that will be run on this uh, node. So actually I want to run this command on C0. So controller actually. So I want to check the interface <coughs> in different interfaces, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, their configuration in the controller. So as you can see, there are many different uh, available, but the interest uh, of our discussion is the NAT interface. And the IP address of this interface is 10.0.0.5. So it means the uh, controller is using this uh, interface for providing the uh, net facility to the host uh, uh, connected to it. So using this interface, host will uh, be, the traffic of the host will be uh, through, uh, the controller will be uh, made available to the internet. So the, the communication will be, every packet will pass through the controller. So there will be a lot of uh, traffic going uh, through the SDN controller uh, because of this uh, NAT, NAT feature. So let's uh, check again the same command, the uh, trace route, and it will show that the first hop is the controller, uh, 10.0.0.5. So every packet is going through the controller. In fact, it is actually uh, going to the internet through controller. So the controller is actually acting as a NAT box uh, in this topology using the NAT feature and level. So as, as I uh, told you earlier, that can be, there can be different applications running like L2 forwarding like uh, that we saw yesterday. L3 forwarding, NAT is another application running on top of. So I have enabled the NAT feature in the controller and it is just acting as a NAT box. So from yesterday, uh, two of the things that didn't work, I want to just uh, uh, go through them as well. So let's have a simple topology pseudo MN. Okay. So we actually were uh, uh, implementing the uh, HTTP client server model and uh, because of a simple space error, it was not working. So let's 
do that again. So I will make, uh, we have two hosts and a switch and a controller in the minimal topology. And I want to configure H1 as the HTTP server and we will uh, uh, use H2 as the client. So H1, Python M HTTP server. Now H2 client will use wget command to connect to this server. So now you can see the reply, okay. So it means the server is applying and the status is 200, okay. So it means there is, uh, we have actually, uh, what we have done here is we have configured H1 as the HTTP server and use H2 as the HTTP client and check the connectivity. So if, if you want to uh, capture the packet at what are the actual packet being uh, transferred during the process, we can use make, or we can make use of the Wireshark and we'll further investigate the packets or open flow messages being exchanged between the uh, host and the controller and the switch and the controller uh, for this to happen. Another question was uh, from, uh, I think, Dr. Fahim yesterday, that what is the way if we want to look at the flow table, like we discussed today, that every uh, switch has a flow table uh, in it. So if we want to check the flow table of uh, a particular switch or all of the switches, we can just use a simple command like dp data path control, ctl, data path control, dump flows. This is a simple command. And it shows that right now there is no flow entry. So I will ping, sorry, I will H1 ping H2. And because of this communication, an entry will be inserted from the controller in the switch. And once and then we will check that what is that entry. Okay, so the uh, uh, communication is started. It means that uh, the uh, inserted the enter. So let's uh, run the command again, dpctl. And now you can see there is a, there are actually a lot of entries in there, but you can see here, it's saying that, um, yes. Uh, yes. So it's saying if the source IP is like 10.0.0.1 and destination is 10.0 or 0 or 2. So what should be done? The out action, output, and output to Ethernet 2. So this is the interface where actually H2 is connected. So if we want to look at it, we can just uh, type the command links, and it will show that host 2 is connected with the switch 1 Ethernet 2 interface. And here it is saying that if the traffic is coming, and we have actually done the command H1 being H2. So it means the source is H1 and the destination is H2. So traffic coming from 10.0.0.1 and going to 10.0.0.2. So this is the entry which is matching with the, uh, uh, with, the with our uh, packets. And this is the action that is being taken by the controller, and uh, sorry, the switch. And this entry is inserted by the controller. So this action is the output that output those packet on this, simple forward the traffic on this interface. And this is the interface where H2 is connected. If we go other way down, actually there is another, because I when we uh, run the ping command, it is a, it's, it's a two way communication. So there will be another entry uh, mentioning that if the source is like here, if the source is 10.0.0.2 means H2 and the destination is H1, forward the traffic to the S1's Ethernet 1 interface. And this is the interface where H1 is connected. So this is, that's how uh, using uh, actually one single query from the switch to the controller has uh, actually uh, caused all of these entries to be inserted by the uh, controller. So all this have been, this was the part of the actually, this is a part of the controller that is uh, uh, the main uh, thing in the SGN environment, 
every entry will be inserted by the controller and every policy and every action is actually uh, orchestrated and uh, is uh, monitored and is maintained and configured by the controller itself which is actually not capable of deciding itself so that's how uh, it is working and that's all for the demonstration of today nat and http server and uh, this uh, uh, dumb flows command. So we'll take question now. Any question? Please. So uh, Lawrence is asking that he is interested in our view. So because I, I know that uh, the reason is the uh, uh, the open flow versions, all of them are available in the R Y U. But pros and cons that must be considered before choosing a controller like the performance there are many performance studies available on each of the in fact there are plenty of uh, the recent acm survey you can go to that in 2020 uh, on the sgn controllers so there are around 34 controllers being uh, uh, evaluated by the uh, the authors in the in that particular paper so that that is one good paper uh, to have a look at which, uh, which, is, which one is the best controller or uh, which suits you best for the particular need. I hope this answers your question. Uh, you can take a uh, go up and um, there, yeah, there are a few other questions. Uh, by the way, Lawrence, uh, 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 the, the paper Mati was uh, uh, telling you about uh, um, uh, you know, has is a is a very uh, good survey, very comprehensive one, and it covers uh, as he he mentioned thirty four controllers. So, Mati, yes. you can share the link in the chat, okay, so that uh, they can uh, you know get uh, benefit from their paper later on. You can take questions by scrolling up there. So, Kizir, so SGM controller, is, yeah, please. So, Kizir is asking which SGM controller is more flexible and liable to operate for newbie. So, uh, in fact. Uh, you can start with any of them depending upon the uh, the uh, the expertise that you have if you are good in java you can start with odl onos or even floodlight if you are good in python you can start with rvu if you are good in c++ you can start with the nox that is uh, so, so the starting point would be your expertise that what actually you want so uh, once you are uh, familiar or have, get some hands on, then you can switch to any other one. I, I would just like to add that when we, you and me uh, together run the course of software defined networking last spring, yes. uh, students had great difficulties with Knox. No, uh, Knox, yes. Because the support is not available. Yes, so this is what I, I, yes. I, I think that Pox is something uh, uh, to start with for newbie, if you are good with yes. Python. Yes. And most of us, uh, most of the, New researchers and students, uh, uh, they are good with Python. Pox is something that you can, and uh, lots of help for Pox is available, lots of examples and all that. Uh, yeah. Okay, so. so Epic, what is Epic? APIC. Dr. Dr. Chaturanga is asking is Epic uh, SGN controller? So uh, I haven't seen this name in the SDN controller list. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's uh, uh, something else. I don't know where uh, it, in my slide. If, if you can refer to the slide, I, I can elaborate more. Uh, if it is from somewhere else, I in fact, I don't know what is uh, this epic is, but uh, I'm like uh, quite sure that it is not one of the SDN controller. Uh, excuse me. Oh, you yes, can please. hear me? Uh, Epic, uh, Epic stands for Application Policy Infrastructure Controller. I think it's it's something Cisco-based uh, application. I need to check whether, whether it's a it's a STN control or or something else. Okay. So uh, actually, we what we have been discussing today are the open source uh, yes. controller. So any proprietary controller are, are not in the list. So there can be other proprietary uh, STN controller. So yes. Uh, in that case, Epic may be a Cisco, or like you, we have um, Cisco, uh, S, uh, Cisco's there on, they, they have other SDN mm -hmm. controllers, like uh, right now I don't have in mind, but there are many other controllers. Uh, 
uh, available from different vendors, proprietary uh, S10 controllers. So, yeah. what is the name of the system? I, I don't remember uh, the name. Yeah, Cisco. please go ahead. Uh, Aslam Alagam Cisco controller name is CTP. Cisco transport controller, CTC. Yeah, but as uh, Mati mentioned, uh, we uh, our focus were, were, was uh, on open source SGM controller. So I think a a APIC, Application Policy Infrastructure Controller, if it is something uh, by Cisco, it, it, it is proprietary. And uh, also Huawei has a famous uh, proprietary SGM controller. I think its name is Netmaster or something master. I don't remember the exact name. So, but we, we, we were discussing uh, controllers okay. that are the Cisco controller, yeah. uh, Cisco uh, controller name is Cisco DNA. Cisco okay. DNA is a, a Cisco SDN controller for the open flow. Uh, so Lawrence is asking that is there any hardware limitation in open flow, uh, for example FPG? So they are uh, and P4 uh, language. In fact, uh, P4 runtime and uh, are available in ONOS and uh, with the optical switches you can use P4 runtime and P4 language as well. And uh, ONOS has the uh, RESTful APIs to deal with this P4 runtime. And then uh, uh, there are, yes, there are uh, some initiative that GPU based and the FPGA based uh, open flow switches. So there are currently research work going on in this domain as well. You can, uh, you can talk about your own performance uh, um, comparison, the, the, the tools yes. that you are using. Uh, just, you can just give the names if they want to compare performance of different uh, yes, yes. You know. so if you want to compare the performance of SDN controller there can be a lot of tools like uh, c bench controller benchmarking tool the hc probe ofc probe um, and uh, similarly the wc bench so there are a lot of uh, a long list of in fact iper uh, is a, is another tool that actually reports the bandwidth between the uh, host and the controller so, and then you can uh, use the Wireshark to capture the packets and then uh, offline analysis of the packet can also give you some uh, numbers for the performance uh, monitoring and evaluation. Just, just want to add one thing. Uh, Lawrence, uh, uh, in uh, tomorrow, Professor Filippo Cugini from School of Superior Santana Pisa will be uh, giving a keynote talk and he will, I think, talk about open and desegregated optical networks, but he has recently been doing a lot of work uh with p4 uh, language as well so you can check out his uh, his research papers and tomorrow you can uh, you know in the qa session you can um you, you can ask uh, if there are specific questions related to p4 so he'll be very happy to answer them because he's a very strong supporter of <laughs> that uh, p4 so thank you so i think uh, most of the uh, all of them are answered any other question, please? Yeah, any questions from the from the audience sitting right in front of us? The physical audience? Okay. Um, Mati, I think wonderful session. Yeah, excellent session. Um, uh, it was... Uh, quite good uh, with the slides when you compared all the SGM controllers and then uh, you complemented it with the, with the hands-on examples. So I hope, um, and you are spot on time. <laughs> 11 is the finishing time. Uh, so thank you. Uh, uh, let's thank our speaker, uh, Mr. Mathieu Rahman, um, PhD scholar here at NetSpeaks. Um, uh, any other question from the, from the virtual audience? Uh, just a couple of minutes to close the session and then we'll have a 15 minutes break. Uh, it's uh, um, the clock is almost turning 11 here. So uh, Pakistan standard time. So we'll start um, the second half of the morning session at 11.15 uh, after the tea break. Okay. Okay. So thanks a lot to everyone. I'll, uh, we'll, uh, let's reconvene after 15 minutes. Uh, at 11:15 uh, PST for uh, what 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 we are going to have uh, uh, in the second half is um, continuing the hands-on uh, 
Anik will build on top of what uh, where Mati, Mati has left and he will talk specifically about the ONOS controller only uh, for, for a brief session of 40 minutes. And then we'll have uh, uh, our first invited talk on high capacity optical communication by Professor Luka from 12 to 1 Pakistan Standard Time before the lunch break, okay? So see you all in 15 minutes. Thanks a lot.